Good morning everybody again, Moxie here. Today is not, oh, this video is not going to be a, a, a training session. It's really an overview to show the five different ways you can add text to uh, your embroidery design. And the five ways are to use a purchased font, to use the text option, to use hyper font if you have it, to use the drawing package fonts, or to create your own font. And I'll start with how I use purchase fonts. So I'm going to open up a blank hoop on the screen and I come up to my file and I go to my design browser and go to your, locate your fonts wherever they are on your screen. For this, I'm coming to the Cute Critters one because I think it's sweet. And I'm going to open my PEZ folder, and here I have the cute um, alphabet. And as it was K that was asking in, I'm going to go to, for K to start with. And there I have a really cute koala on the screen. I'm going to select him and move him out of the way for now. And you'll see why later. And I want to have another. Um, initial here. Most people come here to the paste design and then I don't do this. The reason is if I come to my cute critters again, back to my pairs, I can't tell what the um, images are. I don't know which letter of the alphabet I'm after. Some you can see, some you can't, and I know some of you have programs to show you. So what I always do personally is I always go to my design browser so I can clearly see the images that I'm going to be selecting. So in this case a B and I'm going to open that. And what it's done is put the B into a second window. So I now have two hoops open if you like. One of them has the K and one of them has the B. And all I do now is I highlight the B, I right mouse click and I go to copy and then I go to my window with my K in it, I right mouse click and paste. And there I have my B on the screen and I'm going to drag him up and move it so I've got the letters together. And it's asking me, um, would I like to go to multi-hoop because I'm outside of the screen? I don't. I'm going to say no to that. And what I'm going to do is come up to um, my view and turn my hoop option off for now. That way I don't keep getting pestered with the message, do I want the large or the multi-hoop? So I've got my design. The next thing I want to do is rotate it. So I'm going to come to my change size option. I can rotate to the left or the right and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to the left and I've got my stitch processor activated so it will compensate for any size and any changes and now I'm going to come up to my design and I'm going to say center design I can now turn my hoop back on again I can view in realistic view and there we have one way of adding text to your design and that's by using the purchased fonts that you have. So I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to close that one so I'm back to a blank again and as I said I will be covering these all in more detail in training sessions. This is just an overview of the five ways to add text. Now I'm going to come up to this option which is, is the text and here you are restricted to the built-in fonts of the Futura program. So I'm going to come here. I want KB as the initials or the monogram. And it's asking me what font. So I can pick any of them. It really doesn't matter. Um, let's go to Broadway font. And height, I want it a little bit bigger. That's not quite big enough, so I'm going to make it two. That's better. 
the spacing's on eight, which is fine. And let's change the shape a little bit in frames and stitch it. And I can show you a little bit better view realistic view. And it's um, I've got to keep stop saying um all the time. So there we have on the screen the, the, the letters. I don't particularly like it with that satin like that, so I'm going to come into my outline edit, my embroidery settings, and the K here, I'm going to go to my step pattern, and let's pick one, let's pick this one, double click it, and apply it, I remember now it's number 19, and I've applied that, now I'm going to come to my B and repeat that down to my step pattern, open my catalog, come to 19, double click that, apply that, and I think that's much nicer. I can close out of that. So, where we have some text on the screen by using the text option here, that's the second way of adding fonts new hoop and this time I'm going to go to hyperfont. The nice thing with hyperfont, still have our KB, is rather than using the preset um, fonts installed into the Futura program under the text button, we can use any of the true type fonts that are installed onto our machine. So again it's just coming down and finding one of the fonts that that you like. Um, oh, find a nice one here. Crazy blonde, there you go, that'll do okay. Say okay, next, fill or column, your choice, and I'll finish with that. And there we have KB on the on the screen. I'm gonna go to a hundred percent. And now we've chosen the font within Hyperfont. Once we've put it on the screen, we actually go into our text editing mode to make any changes that we want. It's on two. I'm going to make that a little bit larger. I'm going to make that three. And I'm going to leave the spacing where it is. Let's change the frame and have a slightly different shape. There we go, and change the color to like an orange, and we will stitch it and view in realistic view. And again, we can change the pattern fill, we can change all sorts of things, but that's the simple way just to add some letters to your design, and that's using the hyperfont option. That's the third option close out of that and say no. I'm going to open a new hoop and the fourth way is to use the fonts which are in our drawing package. I want to create a new bitmap. Okay, I'm going to do 4 by 4 and I'm going to view 100%. I'm going to select the color that I want and this time I'm coming into the font option which is letter A down here and the first thing I need to do is position it and I tend to always come over to the center on the left hand side and then down the bottom here you type in the letters that you want again you have all of the true type fonts that are installed onto your machine so you can select any of them that you want um, let's go into the old English and then we can select a size that we want. I'm going to go to let's say 200 um, or let's say no, let's go to 150 and I'm going to say OK to that. Just before I do, you can also underline here. Now I know you can add an underline underscore um, with uh, hyperfont. Uh, this is just another alternative. So I'm going to say OK to that. 
and there we have our letters on the screen and I'm going to save changes um, text can be save it and we're back into our Futura screen now I need to convert this it is no longer a font it's no longer text it's now just become a graphic graphic item so next crop it down to the smallest I can next what size is it it's three inches wide I'm going to make it a little bit bigger I'm going to make it four inches wide and you can see the height is automatically adjusted because it's proportional I'm going to say next I don't need to I can see it's just the, the, the one color there and drag down the narrowest as always now I don't want to stitch the background and I'm going to turn this preview off just for a moment to explain that the stitch out order on any graphic in this case it's letters but it could be any picture that you have the f this is the first block that will stitch followed by this 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 I've only got three what one two three four five I've only got seven blocks here making up these two letters some of the graphics I do they can have like 50 or 60 blocks and for some reason the Futura starts at the top and works down a design the trouble with that is it creates phenomenal jump stitches all over the place which you may have experienced and this is one I consider it personally a downside to this program the uh, it's not the easiest one to organize everything into the correct stitch order and if I show my preview window that will explain a little bit more so this is the first one that's going to be stitched and you can see that's the first one on the preview and if I come to this one it's gone from here it's jumped over here this is the second one that's going to be stitched the B is the third then it's jumping back to the K then it's jumping back to the B and then jumping back to the K so what you do in this screen is you change the stitch order I want this one to stitch first but then I want this one to stitch first which I think is here so what I do is I move that up I want this one here at the bottom to be the next one to stitch so I have to go and find that oh that's, that's part of the K that's fine so I want so I'm stitching that, that, now I want the K, so I move that up. Now I want the B, no I don't, I want this part of the B, so I have to move that up. Then I've got the B, and last the underscore, so that's fine. So next, again, I can select everything, oops, missed those two, and this, I can adjust these one at a time but I might as well do them all in one go because I know I want everything to be three to start with on the density I won't bother with my fills yet I can now just go to next and finish and I will go into my 100% and view in realistic view so it's just an alternative this is the fourth way of adding text um, to your screen but because it's not um, text because it's all graphics um, I can select the single areas which you can anyway and this time I can change the parameters and let's add a satin outline to the underscore or the underline that we have and now I can go into my embroidery settings I could have added it here as I said there's always more than one way to achieve the same end result and here I'm just going to change change the, the color of the satin outline apply that and close and close so there we have our design on the screen the fourth option of how to Add text and I'm going to close out of that. No, 
the last option is to design your own. Come into your drawing package, create a new bitmap, 4x4, four four, OK. I'm going to view it 100%. And now it's just a case of picking the colours that you want. And for, for K, I'm going to go to the filled polygon with an outline. I'm going to make the outline a little bit thicker. And then I'm just going to manually draw a K on the screen. And then I'm going to draw the B. So for um, for the B, I'm just going to do a circle under that. A circle and I'm going to have a, a box. Should I have a box for that or a line? Let's just have a have a plain plain line down there. Actually, I want that a little bit thicker. Let's go for a thick line. I'll get it right in a minute. KB of sorts, but you can get the eye general idea of that. I'm gonna. Um, save changes, um, case, case text, save. Again, I still have to go to through auto punch. It's on the screen. I'm not going to bother cropping it for this, as it's only a quick overview. It's heights four. That's fine. Next, next. I don't want the background next, and I say there's no point in me changing it for this. It's just as an overview, come into a hundred percent and be realistic. So that's the fifth way you can actually design your own font. You can give it a background. There's all sorts of things that you can do, but I just wanted to give you a, an overview of the five different ways to add the fonts or text to your design. You can you use purchase fonts, the text up here for the using the built-in fonts. You can go to hyperfont and use your true type fonts that are on your machine. You can do the same thing in drawing package. You can use the built-in um, true type fonts from your drawing package, or you can go into your drawing package again and create your own design, your own letters, be unique. So I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed that quick overview. I'm not going to save anything, but of course you would be saving your work. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.